What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. Today we'll be taking a look at the new Lorentz Driver Exotic that has been introduced this season, but also taking a look at how we can effectively build into it and allow you to test space-time continuum wherever you decide to take it into. Lorentz Driver is a one of a kind exotic that acts and feels like a futuristic weapon to own. The weapon has a number of traits that allows users to increase weapon damage and cause some serious damage to those caught within its blast, and to top it all off, comes in as a secondary weapon instead of a heavy, allowing users maximum build focus. So while everyone is testing the weapon out and having fun with it, I want to show you a quick and effective build you can use for PvE to truly see how wonderful the weapon is. It's going to consist a lot with damage and energy recharge rate, which will wholeheartedly provide a near unstoppable crowd clearing option for the Void Walkers out there. It will also have some great connection with the Elemental World mods and can be improved on through future renditions if you want even more flexibility. For the time being, we'll go with something simple and fun to maintain. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video, then I would really appreciate a like on the sub as it goes a long way for me. For the subclass, we shall be using the Tumen of Fissions as it has received a recent buff and the flow of the subclass combined with Lorentz's EM Anomaly ability feels like a great pairing for causing as much chaos as possible. This subclass was at one point the most leafless warlock class in game because of its super armor being really strong and the handheld supernova ability combined with controller's hold making it even stronger. Then it got nerfed and became one of the most lowest of subclass domain for any content and then as of recently got buffed to not only fit into PvP as a versatile role but also in PvE to which I have been having a surprising amount of fun with. From the update, Nova Warp has received a 73% damage increasement against PvE combatants and no longer slows movement speed while charging. It also now detonates on cast. The Handheld Supernova has received an increased damage versus PvE combatants by 100% and increased hold time from 2.5 seconds to 3.2 seconds. These two simple but very noticeable buffs allows the subclass to become a viable option against PvE combatants compared to before, where Hunger and Chaos was the main go-to. But this alone isn't why I chose the subclass as a whole. I also chose the subclass because of the Dark Matter perk which provides health, melee, grenade and class ability back via our Void ability kills. As Handheld Supernova has been buffed to do a huge amount of damage against combatants, Kills will be guaranteed and the amount of energy I get back from this can recharge my grenades back to full as if I had Controverse Hold available. This is great when you think about it as mods such as Elemental Ordnance and Elemental Light will see high usage via this one ability and mods like Quantum Might which was also buffed to provide a 25% weapon buff for 10 seconds is surely going to allow us to shred. Overall, this is a very nice setup if you want to mop up in PvE with a constant refresh on ability energy and weapons buff. For the weapons, I would recommend you stick with an all voice setup so you can greatly benefit from the Elemental Arm mods used. However, this doesn't go for your primary, which can be left to your own device. My primary, for example, is the Multimac CCX SMG with Killing Wind and Kill Clip, and I went for this specific role to aid in close quarter environments while also having something fast and reliable. Originally, my plan was to get a weapon with the Osmosis perk and use that combined with the Elemental Armors mod to produce Elemental Worlds freely via my subclass pick. However, a few issues came along with doing this. Firstly, there aren't many good kinetic weapons with the Osmos perk to pick from. And secondly, the weapon of choice, which was the Survivor's Etipum, didn't fit in with the design of the build since I already had a mid to long range weapon equipped it. From this, I chose to use an SMG instead, which would cover the CQC angle of the build and is highly reliable the moment you run out of ammo for your secondary or heavy. Alternatively, Friction Fire and Extraordinary Rendition are great alternatives to SMGs for the primary slot which are both easy to grind for and have great stats to boot. For a second G, I'm using the Lawrence Driver Linear Fusion that has been introduced this season and the weapon is impressively great for mopping up combatants via body or headshots. The exotic has a multitude of traits available that upon activating them will provide a huge advantage from start to finish. For example, Langarian Sight Azotic Perk offers the ability to automatically target combatants or players, killing said marked combatant will then drop a telemetry pattern that also offers bonus ability energy. Now, collecting 3 telemetry patterns without dying provides a 50% weapon buff for 30 seconds, which can be refreshed. This in PvP can steamroll players if you're accurate with your shots and good at staying alive, but for something in PvE though, 
is where the weapon will see the most uses out of everything else. With the weapon comes another trait called EM Anomaly, where upon landing a critical kill on the combatant, you will create a miniature black hole that sucks targets in and then detonates. The damage increasement alongside the black hole option is where the build will be able to become lethal once I apply battle harmony and front of mic damage increasement as well, since both these effects can increase the base damage of Lorenz even further. This overall makes the weapon even more powerful when up against champions or any combatants with large crit spots. For Heavy, I have the Commoration Heavy Machine Gun with Steady Rounds, Zen Moment and Dragonfly, which is a perfect weapon to use for void focus builds. Dragonfly is a great additional perk to have when you want to clear large groups of enemies out as quickly as possible, and it being a heavy machine gun means we can do some hefty amount of damage against bosses to mini bosses alone. Of course, not everyone has the raid machine gun, and not everyone is willing to do a raid to do so, so alternatively, Memory Interdict, Crowd Pleaser, Corrective Measure, or Shattered Cypher are great alternative heavies to use with great perks alongside them. For stats, our aim will be to use our abilities as much as we can so we can benefit from the elemental wells, but also never have to worry about getting into a tough situation with no ammo to spare. Now as mentioned earlier, since the Dark Matter subclass perk alongside my handheld supernova will grant us tons of ability energy from kills, we also have the elemental world mods active as well and our stats can come out however you like since the benefits will be great nonetheless. As you can see, some of my stats seem overboard with what I already designed, but for the sake of safety and planning ahead, I went as high as possible for my stats just to make use of what freely is available. A discipline, for example, has been left at 80 as we want a passively fast grenade cooldown rate in case we mess up and don't produce a well or dark matter buff. At 80, you'll notice the fast charge rate your grenades will have, which is very useful in the tough content where champions or ultras roam freely. Considering how strong handheld is, it makes the most sense to pump as much numbers into the stat to greatly benefit from it at all times. Doing so will allow us to activate the Elemental Orders mod, which will produce a well upon kills. From this, it will then trigger other mods as well, such as the Well of Tenacity mod for a 5 second reduced damage against combatants, and Front of Might for a 25% weapon buff for 10 seconds. As producing wells via grenades will be very often, getting the above mods active will also lead to a constant supply of personal protection and damage boost. Alongside this, we then have our intellect at 70, which will be used on and off sparingly. Mods such as Hands On will allow us to generate more super energy on demand, and from here we don't need to improve on anything else as a subclass tree, weapon kills, and orbs of power will be enough to enable us to activate a super whenever. Now, as I have the Mantle of Battle Harmony in use as well, the Exotic also grants us super energy upon matching subclass with elemental weapons, so our secondary and heavy, both which are void, will see a lot of usage and does prove even more beneficial when being used with the Exotic. At full super, we can then use our super to go to town and do damage on everyone, or we can retain our super and gain a 20% weapon buff, which we can then stack with Thunder Might for even more ludicrous damage. From here, we do have my recovery at 70 for fast rift speed regeneration, and my strength is at 30, which to be honest doesn't need any boost because of the passive ability regeneration. All that's left are the mods that will actually play a role in using most of our weapons, such as Elemental Light for creating wells upon super kills, Fusion Scavenger for more fusion ammo, and Elemental Armaments for producing wells via void weaponry kills. This is as far as you will need to go with the stats, but feel free to add on more if you like. Now, Onto the mods, and these are what I chose to aim for for the overall form of the build. For head, we have Discipline, Hands On, the Near Fusion Rifle Ammo Finder, a well at Tenacity mod. R, we have Minor Discipline, Unstoppable Fusion Rifle, an Elemental Light mod. Chest, we have Resilience, Kakasa Damna Times 2, an Elemental Orders mod. Leg, we have Discipline, Fusion Rifle Scavenger, an Elemental Armors mod. And Bond, we have Minor Discipline. Distribution and front of might mod. Quite an interesting setup to use in abusing PvE, this build will net you a wide load of super energy, damage buffs, protection, and sweet, sweet ability energy galore, no matter who you are up against. A lot of your kills will stem from your grenade, which are designed as a lethal shotgun to take out and delete the most tougher combatants in front of you. From the kills, your abilities will be fully filled, and you can repeat this as many times as you like with no downside to it. As my build doesn't have the ashes to assets mod, it would be wise on your end to do so since you'll be able to gain super energy within seconds. 
A lot of our Roy kills done will produce wells, which as I explained earlier, will grant the user a number of benefits and buffs to make full use of. Beside the energy ability gained from collecting them, you can also gain an extra protection via the well tenacity mod, which is handy when using our SMG or grenades in close quarter fighting. We then had the Phantom Might mod that will grant us a 25% weapon buff for 10 seconds, and this buff alone is great for taking out champions from distance or tackling the mini bosses to bosses alone. The interesting thing about the Phantom Might mod is that it will stack alongside Mantle Battle Harmony or Lens Exotic Perk once active, and this one mod alone can make a whole difference in taking out mini bosses to bosses alone. Now, it won't allow you to easily take out bosses within a few hits, but the damage you can give off is significantly enough for you to opt in and use the weapon as a heavy if your heavy weapon is out of ammo. I've used the damage mod and exotic to easily one the two short ultras, who require heavy ammo or supers to take them out quickly, which I know a lot of other weapons can do the same, but in terms of linear fusions like this, it's quite significant as we won't stack in a ton of damage buffs and boosts just to achieve this alone. Hell, even on its own it can tidy up well, especially if we land critical hits, we can spread this increased damage to others who are pulled in. Landing critical hits with the weapon is pretty easy because of how strong the aim assist is, so you'll always be creating multiple black holes back to back with ease. This makes the weapon perfect for horde type content as one single black hole is all you need to wipe them out. Only issue with the build though is that I've come across is the lack of special ammo at times, even though I have scavenger and ammo finder mods available. It feels like RNG at times for them is non-existent as one moment I'll be showered with ammo, another I'll get none until the end of the mission. We have alternatives though to rely on and sometimes using a linear in most environments isn't always the greatest of ideas because of how high the zoom scope is. Overall, for a star build based around the new exotic and updates introduced, the build does pretty good work against all combatants in PvE. It provides room for safety, damage and effectiveness for generally all content you are in, and the damage boosts provided are easy to create and nab, and this alone allows you to play in high end content effectively. It has its limits of course and won't fit all scenarios, but it can be adjusted to fit these needs of the players, and from there, how you adapt the build is solely down to you. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you did that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all in the next one.